So I'm supposed to be finishing a blog, a blog on what you can and cannot find out from a stress test. And I woke up at six getting ready to go and I started noticing myself scratching here again and I thought, hmm, I still have to do that video on inflammation. What does inflammation look like on the outside? If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Heart attack and stroke are due to inflammation. But when I say that, it just sounds very theoretical, right? Ethereal. When you begin to see inflammation on the outside, you begin to understand what inflammation is. When this is going on in your artery walls, you're at risk for heart attack and stroke. This is a big deal. You look at, some people would say, maybe I'm starting to look like Tommy Lee Jones, at least the Two-Face side out of the movie uh, Batman Forever. We'll go a little deeper into that. Nobody would say I look like Kim Kardashian West. She has psoriasis, which is a very similar skin condition with inflammation of the skin. Now we're gonna go into a whole lot more detail on that. This is gonna take a few minutes. If you don't have the time to take, that's the quick version. Inflammation is where immune cells come to an area. With me, they're coming to my skin right now because I've applied imiquimide because of my basal cell carcinomas, which I'll explain. With Kim Kardashian, it's because of her psoriasis. Those of us at risk for heart attack and stroke, it's in our artery walls, and it's because we've got plaque there and our arteries are attacking. Our immune system is trying to attack and get rid of that plaque. As you see in the middle, it's when the you create that liquid plaque. If that liquid plaque goes out and touches the blood, it can cause a clot. And if the clot's big enough and goes to the heart, boom, that's a heart attack. If it's big enough and it goes to the brain, it's a stroke. Again, we'll go into some depth in this video and maybe try to connect all the dots from Time Magazine when they were talking about inflammation being the big killer and cause of heart attack over 20 years ago and the cardiologist still not quite getting it to how to test for it yourself if you want to take a look. Speaking of testing for it yourself and taking a look, this is a copy of one of my inflammation tests. As you can see, I've got zero inflammation. These first two tests are myeloperoxidase and plaque 2 those are two actors. They are enzymes released by certain types of immune cells which go into your artery wall if you've got plaque that's being attacked and softened by this inflammation process. There's a couple of other things here too. High sensitive HSCRP, it's a protein made by the liver in response to inflammation. Microalbumin over creatinine ratio, that's when you're spilling a little bit of protein because the lining of your artery walls, which is also the filter membrane of the kidneys is inflamed and is letting protein through into your urine. At that point, we also know it's letting cholesterol out from the blood to get lodged in your artery wall, which causes plaque. So again, Time Magazine knew about this way back in 2004, cover issue, the surprising link between inflammation and heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases, what you can do to fight it. And this was cardiology interventions, inflammation for the cardiologists just two years ago, and the cardiologists still haven't wrapped their heads around this stuff yet. So where's the initial area of injury? It's the glycocalyx, that fuzzy mucus-like lining of the artery walls. And here's what happens. Well, that's not in this slide. We'll talk about what happens and how the injury occurs a little bit later. It's usually high blood sugar, hour after hour, day after day, month after month, or high insulin. But it can also be a couple of other things too, like rheumatoid arthritis. Now here's a couple of pictures of guys who are doing what I'm doing. They're applying amiquimide. Now, why am I applying amiquimide to my face? And what is amiquimide? Well, amiquimide is what's called a cytokine. Don't panic over the word. Cyto meaning cell, kind meaning attractant. 
It's a chemical that attracts immune cells to an area. Now, why am I doing that? Do I want to look like Two-Face in Batman? No, I don't, but I do have it. I've, I've got it here. I've got it here. I don't know if you can see that or not. I've got it on my leg. I've got it on my scalp. Here's the story with me. So my mom is in her mid eighties. She's had over 200 basal cell carcinoma. That's a very benign type of cancer. And that sounds like oxymoron, benign cancer. It is, it's not totally harmless. I mean, it's eating up some, it can eat up your, like your nose, your ear and stuff like that, but it's not as aggressive as lung cancers, pancreatic cancers, things like that. It's a nuisance. And again, my mom's 85, 86. She's had over 200 of these. I'm 63. I inherited something genetics, something in her genetics, her skin. My skin doesn't recognize these basal cells either. My dad never had one. My mom had a bunch. I'm 63. I've had almost 100. Now in my, gosh, what was it? Late 40s, amiquamide came out. They called it Aldera at that time. Amiquamide's the generic term. It's this cytokine. You apply it to your skin, it attracts these cytokines. These immune cells begin to recognize bits of growing new birth basal cells. Other humans, and most people, you have these all the time. And when I was younger, I'd have these all the time. But my skin would recognize these basal cells and wipe them out, kill them, before it ever got to this extent. Not so good at that anymore, so I need a little help. And that's what happens. So I'll go for two to four months looking like two-faced. And again, hopefully this helps you get a picture of what's going on in your artery walls if you have risk for heart attack and stroke and what's going on in my skin right now. You see, this is a uh, skin with some of these issues, but then this skin has some blueness here, but then it's got all these red dots everywhere. That's what's going on. Those red dots are immune cells. So immune cells with these red dots on the left, immune cells with these black dots in arteries on the right. And as I said, yeah, there's a model for this with humans where you see this inflammation on the skin a lot more than just, you know, when you're taking amiquamide. It's called psoriasis. And yes, that's Kim Kardashian West. And yes, she did a little thousand plate, a thousand word blog. Anyway, here's more pictures of psoriasis, inflammation of the skin. Here's the article. It's in the Journal of Immunology and it's amiquamide induced psoriasis like skin inflammation. And they tell how it's mediated, this, the axis of immune cells that actually caused the problem. Now let's go back now. Having seen that, having looked at that, let's go back to what we've presented in our inflammation course and a gazillion other videos for this channel. Here's what's going on. Here's what the artery looks like. As you know, from very, very early videos, that's fairly simplified. There are multiple layers of arteries and veins, but let's just keep it simple right now and look at the intima, which is the lining, the media, which is the muscle part and the adventitia, which we don't have to worry about. What happens is if the intima gets inflamed, if we get this process of inflammation, which can happen with rheumatoid arthritis, but most often happens with too much high blood sugar or high insulin, attacking this thing called the glycocalyx, which is made mostly of sugars, a sugar and protein mix. And you can see if you get real high sugars, maybe that's sort of wiping out that glycocalyx. Here's a picture of a healthy glycocalyx right there. See that? Looks like a forest. There's a cross section. There's a diagram. And here's what happens when you have too much glucose for too long. It's like a lawnmower came through and just cut that glycocalyx right out. That then allows cholesterol in your blood. Even if you have low LDL or if you have high LDL, that LDL starts passing through that layer. And guess what? That layer is the filter layer of your kidneys. And if cholesterol is passing through there, down in your kidneys, protein is going to be spilling into your urine. So you do that long enough and you get this buildup of plaque. Well, here's what happens. You can have plaque that's nice and stable and waxy, or you can have the immune cells come in and start attacking plaque. 
And yes, they'll often do that through vesa vesorum. Vesa vesorum meaning the tiny arteries that go to the artery wall itself. There was a lot of information and buzz about vesa vesorum associated with a theory that was presented on Ivor Cummins channel recently, talking about how it maybe was changing the whole format. No, it's not. The same thing. We've always felt that inflammatory cells were coming in, in this case through the vesa vesorum. As they do, what happens is you get this release of liquid. You get release of myeloperoxidase, plaque 2, other chemicals, enzymes, and cytokines, which bring in more cells, which bring in more liquid, which create this soupy, soft plaque. And if that soft plaque breaks through the intima and goes out here, it forms a clot. If the clot's big enough and goes to the heart, it causes a heart attack. If it's big enough and goes to the brain, it causes a stroke. This is the intima. This is not plaque. This is the clot. And the biggest part of the clot broke off, went to the heart, killed this patient. So again, another diagram, vesa vesorum, the vessels going into the artery wall itself, and inflammation, the inflammatory cells, monocytes, foam cells, macrocytes, neutrophils. This is a picture of neutrophils, and this is a diagram of uh, inflammatory cells getting into the artery wall. I mentioned that it's stable usually when cholesterol leaks through that intima, unless the immune system starts attacking it. When it does attack it, all these enzymes get released and this liquid starts coming in. And that's exactly why this little patch right here looks like liquid and it's retracted away from the slide itself. So again, not gonna repeat this. I talked about it a few minutes ago. We've known about inflammation for a long time. It's just that the medical community has not known that much about what to do for it. Here's another diagram, and this starts with a, quote, normal, quote, healthy artery wall here. Here you're starting to get some F2 isoprostanes, in other words, not the greatest lifestyle, some oxidation products, oxidized LDL getting into the wall. Then you start getting some inflammation, microalbuminuria, high sensitivity, C-reactive protein, you get released to this green stuff. The green stuff is actually green. It's green because of a color in uh, myeloperoxidase. Myeloperoxidase, you might remember this, it's sort of a gross image, but you know, when kids get a viral illness, they can get a uh, greenish tint to the snot coming out of their nose. That's because myeloperoxidase, which is in that mucus, is green. It's related to the fact that hemoglobin is also red. Not gonna go down that bunny trail, but just a fun fact. If you get enough of this going on, you get release of this stuff. If you get release of that stuff, you get a clot. So that's helping you understand a little bit more about this process. You've heard the terms oxidized LDL. This gets into a little bit about why oxidized LDL is so important. It drives a lot of this spiral of inflammation. Again, the inflammation panel, as I mentioned before, like any of the other lab stuff, these labs are often difficult to find, showing people where to find it, showing a little bit about the filter in the kidney, another diagram of the filter in the kidney and how kidney has the urine leaks or filters through the intima space. This is a little bit more explanation about exactly what microalbumin looks like, urine strips, testing methods, things like that. In the inflammation course itself, we go into a little bit deeper into diagrams and the actual cells themselves, what they look like, where you see them, how they grow, what they're doing, how we can find them under the microscope. C-reactive protein, we talk about C-reactive protein and what that looks like. We also talk about some interesting new developments in terms of anti-inflammatories. There are a lot of different types of anti-inflammatories. For example, the most commonly known are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs. Those actually, for the most part, tend to increase cardiovascular risk. So don't take those. There's been some interesting research in terms of different colchicine, which is an anti-inflammatory for gout. Several other medic, Kenya Kenyamab, which you see on this New England Journal article, stuff that's used for, it's a high level micro biomedical chemical that's been used. It actually showed some decrease in heart attack and stroke. 
It also decreased their immune function and so probably not going to see a lot more in that space. So again, appreciate your interest and that's the story on what inflammation looks like on the outside, just in case you were wondering what it looks like on the inside. So I'd like to talk with you a minute about the webinar. People don't understand what the webinar is. It's actually a great way to get some access to healthcare that you're just not going to get any other way. You actually get the lab tests yourself for at a local lab, a Quest lab near you, for the inflammation panel and the OGTT and the insulin survey. These are things, inflammation and prediabetes, that your doctor just does not know about. And here's the thing. Harvard Health and many others have said, look, sudden death is not always so sudden. The Hollywood picture that it's a bolt out of the blue is not realistic. It's more like real lightning preceded by clouds, wind, and rain. Stop that metabolic storm before the lightning strikes. And here's where that metabolic storm comes from. It's inflammation, and it has to do usually with prediabetes. So again, we actually get labs. We go over them in the webinar, and then you can start finding out how you can prevent that heart attack. Others said that you couldn't even predict. We can show you how. Thanks.